I want to start off by saying a quick thank you to some of the key organizations that helped make this work, helped us develop this program, starting with the City of Hermitage, of course, that it was the original creator of the E-Center, and they provide the great services to this day, supporting Linden Point Development Corporation. The Linden Point Development Board members to approve this project, we started talking about this over a year ago. Actually, the concept was brought up earlier, but it was one of our potential programs that we thought would be great for the community, and they gave us the okay to start planning and and developing this program about eight, nine months ago. Penn Northwest Development Corporation, Rod Wilts Group did a fantastic job supporting us and helping us achieve the funding necessary for the program, so thank you very much. Uh, And then private contributors with Margaret Walker Foundation, Hudson Construction Ship Foundation, and then of course the state of Pennsylvania for awarding us the the Pennsylvania Smart Grant in December. So thank you very much. Uh, We all know what it takes to build programs like this, community programs, and, and so thank you very much. I'd like you to meet the design team. I'd like to start in the upper right-hand corner. We have Jonathan Steenland, who is the co-founder and partner of a company named Force Now out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. I've known Jonathan for many, many years. He was the former, the original chief information security officer in North America for Fujitsu. He then went on to become the chief strategy officer of the National Cybersecurity Center out of Colorado and has started a number of companies uh, with this force now being the latest company that is doing quite well. Uh, I consider Jonathan a foremost authority and leader on cybersecurity programs in, in the United States. He's been involved in many different programs over the last 20 years, and his great ideas and concepts has really made a big difference. In, in when I was at uh, Fujitsu, it was his work and effort that enabled us to be the first cybersecurity team and for all of global Fujitsu. We have Matthew DeMaria from Penn State University, Shenango Campus. Matthew is a cybersecurity analytics and operations program coordinator. Very knowledgeable in the areas of cybersecurity and will be acting as the interim instructor for our pilot program. Uh, Matthew brings a a wealth of knowledge and and technology knowledge uh, to this program. And then we have Brendan Radcliffe, who is our project manager. He is uh, is also an entrepreneur and been involved in starting um, some companies, small companies. And Brendan brings a tremendous amount of support in his his ability to support us in his technology skills and really has been the basis for the new programs that we have implemented at the E Center. So a very valuable team member. And then myself, Executive Director Linden Point, and in a former life uh, until the end of 2020, 20 was the Senior VP and CIO for Fujitsu North America. So we'll have a program overview. Um, simply, I know that I've talked, uh, we have talked to many of you on, on the call here, hoping to explain what we're trying to do and where we want to go with this program. Pennsylvania Cybersecurity Center, we want it to be an incubator uh, or supporting incubators and will serve as a collaborative technology and innovation ecosystem where we're going to bring together industry organizations, government agencies, academic institutions to work together to address businesses' most pressing cybersecurity challenges. And we know there are many in the world today. So we're hoping that this is going to be the start of something very valuable to the community for Mercer County and and Western Pennsylvania and hopefully all of Pennsylvania at some point. We have a mission statement. And that is create this ecosystem with the regional businesses and the high schools and the community colleges and universities. We will provide a workforce development and retention, uh, a workforce development program and retention of future cybersecurity professionals in Pennsylvania. We want to establish these centers as an ecosystem for technology and cybersecurity startup. We're hoping that that's going to attract attract startups in the cybersecurity realm to take a close look at the center to see what they can do to support their, their startups in this technology field. This number is a few months old, but at one count, there were over 4,000 startups in, in the United States for cybersecurity. And you could imagine this is a, such a dramatic field, and a very demanding field right now with the threats that we have in the world. We'd like to, where we're going to introduce many of our uh, citizens' introductions to a cybersecurity careers. We're going to provide real-life cybersecurity training, creating academic and cyber partnerships, And when we say cyber partnerships with some of the leading cyber companies in North America and really the world and actively engage in risk assessments for regional business entities. So we're hoping that in later phases that this becomes a program that's going to support a lot of cybersecurity needs that are out there to meet these challenges in the world. So with all that said, I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan Steenland to talk a little bit about global industry trends and the program itself. Thank you, Jeff. 
Yeah, there has never been a better time to launch something like the Pennsylvania Cybersecurity Center. I've been tracking these numbers for quite quite a number of years, and they just continue to go up and up and up. We're currently at six trillion dollars being lost annually due to cyber crime. Uh, there's more money made in cyber crime, according to the FBI, than there is in drug trafficking, which is just difficult to believe. It just continues to go up 15 percent per year and is estimated by 2025 to be roughly ten and a half trillion dollars being lost. And it's, it's, it's not just coming from large governments and large businesses that are being impacted. Unfortunately, now half of the cybersecurity attacks are actually going and being targeted towards small businesses. And a large number of those are actually going out of business simply because of cybersecurity attacks being unprepared for them and being unequipped to be able to deal with things like ransomware, wire fraud, business email compromise that are just impacting um, every single company and individuals on a day-to-day basis. The good news is that this translates into opportunities because from a supply and demand perspective, when you have that much damage occurring, there's obviously a a very, very high demand for cybersecurity professionals. Currently in the U.S. alone, there are 925,000 people employed currently in cybersecurity jobs. Unfortunately, there are still 600,000 unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the U.S. alone, 3.5 million globally. And here, even here in Pennsylvania, there are currently posted, just the ones that are posted, 20,000 unfilled cybersecurity jobs. And in our neighboring state, Ohio, 14,000 unfilled jobs. That has just driven the annual income for cybersecurity professional is getting started to be an average across the U.S. of of $72,000. And according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, this is not going to be changing anytime in the near future. In fact, they are expecting a 31% growth in cybersecurity through 2029, which is seven times faster than the average job growth, which is 4%. So we have spent almost the last year really behind the scenes prepping for this day, for this for this kickoff. And we're super excited to have so many people who have come around and supported us. Uh, we've also assembled some industry partnerships with companies like Cisco, CompTIA, MindForce Now. Cisco in particular is widely recognized and has been for a long time as a staple of the largest, most respected companies when it comes to enterprise networking. Most of their equipment runs the backbones of, of many, uh, many large companies and governments, and they just have very, very robust training and certification packages that are in, in play in a, a lot of different environments. CompTIA is pretty much the gold standard as it relates to technical certifications. And so we have partnered with them and are providing three different training and certification courses, which Matthew will be talking about a little bit later. And then my company, Force Now, brings the hands-on experience. We hope to be the best first and last job as it relates to cybersecurity. Where they go in the middle is up to them, but we're excited to be providing uh, internships and apprenticeships to these students. We're also extremely excited to have some amazing support from our uh, local colleges and universities, in particular Penn State, Shenango, Teal College, Westminster College. And we expect that this list will continue to grow over time. But we're so thankful for the strong, robust support that that we've received from these three, three schools already. So what exactly is the Pennsylvania Cybersecurity Center and how does it differentiate from other organizations that are out there providing training and certification because there are a lot of them. I would say that in a nutshell, what differentiates the PCC is the holistic nature of the program. We're starting at the earliest possible age with young high school students, we are exposing them to the wide variety of jobs and and choices that they have in cybersecurity. What I've experienced over the years, speaking with a lot of high school and college students and parents as well, is that there is a massive misconception about what cybersecurity is. So many people think that cybersecurity is limited to what they see on Mr. Robot on HBO, which is some dude, white dude typically, uh, with a hoodie 
in his mom's basement um, in his mid thirties, uh, doing some sort of coding and and, and backdoor hacking uh, into government systems. And while that is one flavor or one version of cybersecurity, it is a very limited view of all the available options that people have to them when it comes to cybersecurity because it touches every single industry and it can go everything every, everywhere from very technical to managerial to consulting and so what we want to do is provide exposure to individuals so that they can at least consider whether this may or may not be a good fit for them and then give them access to internships and apprenticeships part-time employment full-time employment employment opportunities, but then also let them have access through things like the cyber range and cyber competitions that we'll be talking about uh, towards the end of this presentation, where they can really experience in a virtual environment what it is like to be a cybersecurity professional. And then once they've gone through our training and certification to our partnerships, be able to promote all the different cyber pathways that are available to them as next steps in their careers, whether that's moving on to continuing higher education through our partners, whether that's going into a government agency job, whether that's going into the military, or whether that's the wide variety of opportunities that are available to them in businesses, everything from startups to global 100 companies. So at this point, I'm going to turn over to Matthew because I'm confident that the majority of you in this room are very interested to hear from an educator. And we are very fortunate to have an amazing one that is going to be actually facilitating and teaching these, these classes getting started. So Matthew, over to you. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. I'm going to start by going through each one of the courses we're going to initially offer. I mean, the bold plan is to eventually offer more and more curriculum as we go along and develop this program and grow it into a, a much larger educational opportunity to support both are the initiatives of new students and continuing continuing students. I want to start by talking about CompTIA. CompTIA, as was mentioned, is one of the staple certification vendors. Been around, they've been around for about 40 years, and here in the past 25 or so years, they've really focused on developing a strong curriculum to start IT professionals off with that have very little experience and then grow them and mature them into very strong IT professionals. And they, they have also fostered their cybersecurity area quite well here in the past about 10, 8 years or so um, since they um, brought in some of their certifications. We're going to start off with so all the certifications kind of have tiers. The very first begin tier is the beginning tier, and then there's a professional tier, and then there's an advanced tier. And we're going to focus um, on making sure we have that first tier and second tier covered very well right off the bat with the pilot. And CompTIA's initial beginner tier revolves either around PC support or networking, and so the cybersecurity area really focuses more on the inner workings and inter interconnections of computers, and that's where the Network Plus comes into play. This is their beginner certification that allows for people to get general knowledges of how computers talk, how they work within the infrastructure, and also it allows them to gain ex hands or well training experience through simulations and labs to work with situations that might arise when it comes to um, difficulties that could happen in this area. And that brings us straight into the cybersecurity portion of their um, curriculum, which is their second tier. And Security Plus is by far one of the most recognized beginner entry-level cybersecurity certifications that are focused just on security. This is one that we're very happy to make sure that is part of our curriculum as it is one of the internationally recognized certifications that CompTIA offers. It is a really good pro a really good program. The curriculum that we're bringing to the table is was developed by CompTIA. And one of the great things about their particular curriculum in this area is they offer a scaffolding approach that allows to collect individuals that may have some background and some that have no background and bring them all to the same level by the end of the course to be able to pass the certification exam and achieve this milestone. The last of the current courses we're looking to implement with CompTIA is their CYSA, which is their begin. Well, I want to say beginner, but it's not really beginning. It's it's their first advanced certification. They have a couple others that go beyond this, um, but. This is the, the cybersecurity certification that is going to open a lot of doors that Security Plus has just began to crack. And what's awesome about this particular certification is it starts to getting into the nuts and bolts of individual tasks that a cybersecurity professional may or may not incur in part of their 
process. Um, things like incident handling. When, when e- e- there, there's a couple different thoughts when it comes to cybersecurity. One of them is. Um, if you're a small business and you're not aware whether or not you've been hacked, you probably have. Well, the incidents response handler is one of those people that understands that that happens and what do we do next? Creates a plan. So this this particular certification really focuses on building up the, the risk analysis, the skills um, for the security engineer to work and develop um, plans for, for those types of attacks and thwart um, them before they happen, not become one of those statistics that we were talking about in one of the previous slides. And that brings us on to the Cisco portion. So we have basically two avenues starting off with within our educational track. We have CompTIA's, beginner, medium, and advanced, and we're also going to have Cisco's. Now, Cisco doesn't necessarily start off directly at the beginner approach. Their first certification is more of the middle one middle tier to start with. And so I'll explain a little bit um, here in a slide in the future about how our approach is for the pilot as far as um, which demographics and which um, populations of students the courses will be available to. But eventually the goal is to make them open to everybody um, at all tiers. But Cisco um, is an industry leader and they have been, I don't remember the exact percentage and statistics that because they keep on fluctuating and changing but there was a point that one third of all networking equipment inside the entire world was cisco and so that that is a big percentage of networking devices that this particular vendor supports and because of that they've been able to kind of pave the way on how even other manufacturers utilize and work with their standards the very first course um, for certification we're going to focus on is the CCNA certification and this particular certification is one is heralded as one of the most um, well recognized networking certifications out there and it also is pretty um, say substantial certification in material that is the body of material that is required for the certification actually has to be broken down into three individual classes uh, in order to be able to cover the amount of material it has within this particular certification. Now what's great about this is it also allows for an introductory approach to those who don't have a ton of computer experience and allows for that build up similar to what we were doing with CompTIA's from the begin from the beginner. The first course that, that this particular program for the CCNA has is called Introduction to Networks and it lays that groundwork um, to introducing students to how a network works, what are the pieces of it, what are the international standards of all the ind- devices and that make everything work together because you, it's just amazing all the different places uh, we get technology from and it just all happens to work together and there's a reason for that and th- this lays the groundwork to under- for the understanding and realization of how that takes place. The second course, Switching Routing and Wireless Essentials, focuses directly in on the communication process. How does information get from point A to point B? When you double click on the uh, Edge or Chrome or Firefox and you type in a URL and click send, how does the information go from your computer to wherever it might possibly go on, like for instance if you're Google searching, to a server farm out in California or Seattle? And so this class takes and that and breaks that approach down to understanding all the pieces and how to configure them to get information from one device on one edge of a network all the way to a device on another edge of a network, which is a very, very big undertaking. The last course in the CCNA progression is focused on the administration, continuation, growth of computer networks, um, specifically working within the enterprise and automation areas. And this is also where they get their first taste of security for network um, security as well. And so this course really brings the student into the corporate working environment, looking at how devices that are designed for the enterprise are a little bit different than what we would buy for our consumer usages. Like, this is not the stuff you go to Best Buy to pick up. So what's great about these Cisco courses is they have a platform built in with them um, that allows for simulation of working with their particular devices and it is very 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 easy to use however offers a lot of complex configuration to where you could do things by setting up satellite dishes you can uh, add weather elements like heat and temperature and rain and do all kinds of different simulations that could simulate different types of disasters and different types of variables that you would have to take into consideration when you're building this kind of infrastructure and it's it, it's a very nice platform that Cisco offers through the network command academy now one thing I've, I've just noticed was um, missing from these slides is that each one of these courses we have given our, our own personal defining name 
and that is just so so it makes it kind of easier to understand what the order of the courses with the CCNA because the acronyms and enterprise networking doesn't really give away what order it goes in. So these courses run Cisco one or CCNA one, CCNA two, and CCNA three. Um, and so this is for you, then. As far as the naming of the courses, when you'll see that is relevant here in a minute when I show you the rollout plan. And lastly, um, Cisco offers their own version of a advanced um, cybersecurity certification, and, and this is a really, really sought-after one, um, and is considered to be one of the upper echelon tiers, especially when it comes to governmental contracting. And it's the Cyber Ops Associate. Um, now, one thing that this certification, and it definitely shares this with the upper-level CompTIA one as well, is all of these cert cybersecurity certifications are written around national standards. Um, we have NIST which is a very um, prominent government organization for trying to keep consumer and enterprise businesses safe um, within the United States that has built this nice framework. And so uh, all of these certifications are built around this nice framework, and so that makes it a really good standardization on how to implement good security policy. And the students who are taking these courses are going to get to learn these individual standards that everybody is doing practice by nationwide and actually worldwide. So that brings us to our timeline. What we're showing here is our pilot and are the growth going into the next couple of phases with our particular um, certification track. Uh, initially, we're going to start off small, and as we move along and we add a full-time instructor and the ability to adapt and grow um, the class sizes, we, we're going to bring on more and more classes. What you're going to see is a progression going through that the first group of students are going to come in with the Network Plus and the CCNA, and then there will be a small summer cohort as well, um, and then in the fall, we'll move on to phase two, offering, once again, the introductory course, but also offering the second level courses. In the spring, we'd offer the third level courses, and that would complete the progression of the initial pilot and students by the end of spring 23 with those certifications. Initially, we're going to start off with the CompTIA on the high school side, being that it focuses more on the beginner. We we're offering the Cisco to the college students who are in degrees that may have already had a good, have somewhat of a foundation um, on that being that certification just a little bit more advanced and there's a little more assumptions made with that. Like I said, initially this is how the start, we're planning the start and breaking it up. In the future the plan is to offer all the courses open to whoever would like to take them when we have the support and we have the infrastructure to support the class sizes of larger quantities. Um, to that I'm going to go back to Jonathan to um, discuss this. Thank you Matthew, great job. All right, so what is required of the students? Not much. They obviously do need a computer, ideally a PC or a Mac. Uh, Chromebooks may work, but sometimes they're not powerful enough to run the virtual labs, etc. If any of the students do have any issues, just let, let's, let's communicate and figure out what works best for them. But uh, ideally, that's a PC or a Mac. We do need reliable Internet access. Uh, we do need a webcam and a mic. And the number one question that we hear, especially from high schools, is how much time is this going to take per week? Uh, well, that really all depends on, on the student. So this is, these classes are uh, a hybrid, self-paced with virtual office hours by Matthew and other instructors in the future. So it really depends on each student and how quickly they learn and digest and progress through the, through the course. But we estimate that it's going to take uh, about three to six hours per week. What <laughs> this is probably the, this, this is actually the number one question I get all the time, which is what makes an ideal cybersecurity candidate? Uh, for me, the answer is the ability to adapt and overcome. And that's just a, an army term that I learned when I was in the army, but that embodies a lot of these characteristics that are listed here, like the ability to think outside the box, like individuals who are driven. And sometimes that looks like being driven to distraction. What's what's really interesting and emerging in the world of cybersecurity is neurodiversity, which really means that we are recognizing and learning that kids on the spectrum often make really good cybersecurity candidates. The British aversion, British equivalent of the US's NSA, National Security Agency, actually is one of the largest employers of people on the spectrum and autistic individuals uh, in the world. And so that should tell you something right now. Just individuals who are curious, they're 
they want to understand how things work. Sometimes that involves breaking things so they can figure out how to fix them. Uh, sometimes that means hacking around a little bit. Uh, we're not afraid to work with those types of individuals or bring them in because as we already have successful case studies here at the e-center with individuals like AJ, uh, et cetera, who you may have heard from in the past, this type of environment can just, for some folks, um, staging ground and the incubator for them to really get their hands wet and understand what they want to do in life. And that's the environment that we're trying to foster here. There are two specific ways that we are really going to provide some some immediate hands-on experience. Actually, three. The first one, really what Matthew was talking about, embedded into most or all of the courses that we're offering, both through CompTIA and through Cisco, are virtual lab environments. But those are those, those are limited, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're good. They do make it an interactive learning experience. But from Jeff and, and my experience at Fujitsu, nothing beats a cyber range. And so what is a cyber range? Well, a cyber range is basically a virtual environment. In our case, it's going to be in the cloud. It includes all of the common technologies that are used in most large enterprises and government environments. So it would include Cisco routing and switching equipment. It would include firewall equipment from companies like Palo Alto. It would include intrusion detection systems and security information and event management SIM solutions antivirus solutions. So basically everything that is available to a working professional that gets into a career in cybersecurity embodied into this virtual box that we call a cyber range. And in those scenarios, we have sort of red team, blue team environments, red team being hackers, blue teams being defenders. Now, we will primarily be starting out in our cyber range with the blue team, the attackers, because that's what we're going to, I mean, I'm sorry, the blue team, the defenders, because that's primarily what we're going to be teaching is how people can defend their networks. Over time, though, we'll probably have more offensive types of, of cybersecurity training available as well. But the beauty of this model is that it can all happen in a nice, safe sandbox environment where people can experiment, they can fail, and they can learn, and they can get better. And for a lot of individuals starting off in cybersecurity, this is the first time that they've ever seen what a firewall is like or an intrusion detection system or a networking router or even a virtual server. And so this is just a phenomenal capability that uh, we hope to have available through the Pennsylvania Cybersecurity Center uh, later this year. The benefits of this are just so, so wide. Not only is it helpful for people to be exposed to these different types of technologies, including the students that are participating in our programs and our training and our certification, but also for local businesses. This is an opportunity for them to validate what is commonly in the IT world called proof of concepts, where they may be interested in adopting or purchasing some new cybersecurity technology, and they really want their teams to be able to get some hands-on experience with those technologies to see all the bells and whistles and see actually how they would actually perform before they invested a lot of money on their own. So it's just one of those, it will be one of these community benefits here in Mercer County and for Pennsylvania that will scale as we continue to grow this program. Also, something that we hope to be launching this summer are going to be community hackathons. And so some of these will be done in the range. Some of those, these will be done with virtual machines that we'll have available. But the hackathons are really the first way that a lot of people in the community will be exposed to cybersecurity. So we'll have community events hosted in hybrid model, both here in person at the at the e center as well as online. And this is where current students, potential future students, 
working professionals can all come together and participate in a competition it has a number of different flavors to it. Some of them are termed capture the flag. Some of them are more hands-on attacking and defending, but they typically take place in about a two-hour period in an evening after hours, so as many people as possible from the community can participate. All right, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff Meyer, and then we're Okay, thank you, Jonathan and Matthew. Thank you very much for that uh, those presentations. A lot of information there. And I just wanted to extend a, a big heartfelt thank you uh, to all of our community partners. We spent a lot of time in the last eight to nine months talking with a lot of people, getting a lot of support, and I just wanted to make sure that we recognize all the different organizations, our community partners that were involved. And once again, thank you very much, because without you, this wouldn't be possible. So we really appreciate it. We know this is a start, but we think it's a start of something very good for the area. So thank you very much.